What's going on, doggies? Welcome back to another video and welcome to a solo survival challenge. So right now, we are out in the harsh Australian outback. We've got absolutely no food, no water, or no shelter. All right, here we go. So I've given myself three things to complete this challenge. We're only allowed to use one little baby roll of fishing line, which I have here. One roll of fishing line. We've got one fishing hook. So if I lose this fishing hook, we are absolutely cooked. That's two items. And the third item that we're allowed to use is a knife. So we've got a knife, fishing line, and a fishing hook. That is absolutely all I've got. We've got no water, no means of starting a fire, no means of building a shelter, absolutely nothing. The other things in my backpack here, box of GoPro batteries, obviously, so I can document this next couple of days, a GoPro head camera, and um, a personal location beacon. So this thing is act actually gonna save my life. This is legit, I don't have water, food, or shelter. So I'm out here in the bush by myself, and if shit hits the fan, that thing is gonna absolutely save my life. But I'll run, I'll run through that a little bit later on. That is the whole entire context of this backpack. There is nothing left in that bag whatsoever. So it's just you, me, a knife, fishing line, and a hook out here in the bush. So we're gonna try to survive. We're gonna try to get food. We're gonna try to gather a little bit of water. But the first thing we gotta do, we gotta find our north bearing. So we're gonna make a bush compass. We're gonna use the sun. We're gonna use a stick. We're gonna find our way north and we're gonna keep walking through the bush. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna make ourselves up a little bit of a bush compass. All right, so I've been walking through this bush for about three hours now. What I've done is I've been dropped off by a car on the highway, which is way up there. It's about a three hour walk into where I am now. Probably got another two hours, hour and a half walk ahead of us before we get to the destination where I wanna go. But what happens is when you're out here in the bush, you're in this kind of scrub country, it, everything looks identical, and everything looks the same. And these trees, they're just big enough that you can't see over the top of them. So it's very, very easy to get lost, disorientated in the bush out here, especially when you don't have a compass on you. But there is a way where you can, where you can find your axis east, north, south, and west using the sun and using a stick. So we're gonna quickly run, this, run through this now. I'm gonna find my north bearing and we're gonna keep pushing north. So what you wanna do is you wanna find yourself the straightest stick you possibly can. So this section here is absolutely perfect for what we wanna do. All you gotta do is stick this stick in the ground, make sure she stays there. It's gonna be in for about 20 to 30 minutes. So keep that stick vertical as possible. We're using that sunlight to cast that shadow. Make yourself a nice little bed here. This little bit of kangaroo shit, you're just gonna drop it on the very tip of the shadow of the stick. So this compass is doing its thing already. The kangaroo shit's there, the stick is very slowly moving. As that sun moves, the stick moves. So I'm gonna leave this here for about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm gonna go walk around the bush. We're gonna try to find materials that are gonna help us start a fire tonight. We're gonna go try to find anything that's gonna help us out tonight. And um, we'll come back to this stick in 20 to 30 minutes, make a line, and that should give us our north so we can keep heading the way we want. All right, have a look at this. You can see how much this has moved since we've been gone. All right, so that's about 20 to 30 minutes of time has passed. That's the initial piece of kangaroo shit that we put there at the beginning. So we'll just grab another little one over here, little lollies. We'll drop that one on the tip of that shadow. Now, what you do is, because this bit of kangaroo shit, the stick has gone onto that side of it, I know if I draw a line, or if I put a stick down like this, that is west, that's gonna be east. Now, if I grab another stick and make a cross out of that, that now is my compass. I know if I stand here, I can stand here like this, that line right there is north. So we have north, south, east, and west, just by using a stick and the sun. And we, we wanna head north, so that's where we're going. Alrighty, we're just following this. You can see this very well used animal track, kangaroos and goats. We're just following this track. 
north. Hopefully it takes us down that ravine and then um, take us somewhere for the night. Spiders. There we go. That's actually not bad at all. You know that saying, another man's trash is another man's treasure. That there is gonna help us contain any kind of liquid, food, water. That is an incredible bloody find. That's going straight in the backpack. That's epic. This is what's going on right now. I've made it to the destination where I wanted to get this afternoon. Just beat the sunset, that sun is racing down. I am so bloody thirsty. Pretty much the whole of day one was walking through that scrubland. Now we've arrived on the edge of this bank. The river is just behind there. And um, thought we found the perfect cave to sleep in. Full of bees, man. There was a massive beehive in the back of that cave. So I'm trying to find a couple more caves so that I can rest up in tonight because as soon as it goes dark, I don't have a torch. I've got nothing to see with tonight. And um, we're pretty much gonna be sitting in a cave until the sun rises tomorrow morning. So. We've got to try to find a cave before it gets dark so I can scout the cave, make sure there's no bees, make sure there's no hornets and wasps and whatever else. And then I'm just standing here and this mother of a kangaroo, like a big red, was just standing right here and he just launched off into the bush. That was a big roo, man. So, um, no, the nature's, nature's here. We just got to go find somewhere that I can sleep tonight. I'm not going to have time to make a shelter and, um, in these sort of situations when you're trying to survive you should really try to preserve your energy anyway and not really not really build a shelter if you can find one so just going to keep pushing on up that way hopefully we can find a cave or something we can nestle ourselves up into and then the next thing is we need to start a fire i'll show you why here we go have a look at this Here's another beautiful cave. That's perfect to sleep in for the night. Look at that. Right. Let's hope there's no bees in here. That's epic. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This cave is incredibly good. It's massive, sandy bottom. It's actually the whole entire floor is covered in rabbit shit. That's all rabbit shit right there. So there must be a couple of rabbits that are coming in and out of here, but this is a perfect cave to sleep in. It's big. We've got a big roof up here above our heads. So that's, that's gonna stop the dew, the wet mornings. I'm completely out of the wind here. I'm about, I don't know, what's that? About a hundred meters away from the edge of the river. That's the edge of the river over there. So look, mosquitoes are probably still gonna be bad, but they're not gonna be as bad sitting on the edge over there. It's quite a nice little place. I think I'm gonna call this home. There's a couple of old wasps. A couple of old wasp nests though. But they're very old. Look, they're just gonna fall apart. There's nothing inside them. Jesus Christ, there's a couple. Well, I reckon I'm gonna call that home. That is pretty incredible. So I've spent the whole entire day walking to get to this point. Have not had a mouthful of water, not even a sip of water. Dehydration is, it's a bloody thing, I'm telling you. I can barely, I can't even spit right now. So what I'm, what the problem is, there's a river right here. I'll take you there now. There's a river down here, but the problem is that I can't drink the water out of that river without boiling it or purifying it or something like that. I drink that water as it is like this. I'm gonna be sick as the dog. So we've got to try to start a fire, something like this, but I'll show you the river. What a bloody beautiful sight. The only problem is, I cannot drink that water as that is right now. Really, really badly. Need to start a fire. That sun is absolutely racing down. It is pumping down over there. And um, we need to start a fire. So what I'm looking for are materials to make some sort of a bow drill.
that, that's perfect. Oh, come on. Oh, why? Come on. Come on. Yes, look at this. Come on. Come on. It's smoking. Look at this, look at this. I can't stop. Come on. Oh, look at this. Can you guys see the smoke? Look at this. Oh. Come on. It's smoking. Look at this. Come on. Oh. That was so close. Oh. Oh, far out. Oh, look at that smoke, man. Come on, baby. Oh, far out. Why oh, don't you just work for me, Baba? Come on. Oh, my God. That was so close. You see somebody do this on a video, and you think it's easy, I'm telling you right now, it's not. It is hard. Look at my hands, man. My hands are absolutely red raw. I've been going hard, and it's just about to go dark. That beautiful orange glow has nearly disappeared, so sooner or later, it is gonna be pitch black. You won't be able to see me, I won't be able to see you, I don't have a torch, and right now we don't have a fire. Yes! Come on. Come on, you big rig. That's it. Come on, come on. It's smoking. It's going. Come on. That's it, that's it. Come on, come on, come on, Baba, come on. That's going, that is going. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Look at that ash. Come on, that's it. Work, man. This is absolutely ridiculous. I've got the driest, fluffiest grass, completely all frilled up, all the bloody, it's just, it does not take ignition. I've got a different type of grass here. It does not take ignition. I've got even this dry, crispy, crispy, different even kind, of, it's not even a grass, it's like weird stuff does not work. I need to go and find a proper kind of a tinder that I can put under this because look, this is smoking like an absolute bloody champ. This thing is working like an absolute champ. It's actually, those two, the spindle and the seat, they're forming smoke. There's actual smoke coming. The embers falling out of the, out of the V that you cut into the wood. And then it's laying on top of this useless grass and the grass I'm sitting there blowing will not take a light. So 
it is pretty much about to go dark and I'm just gonna do this until it's pitch black. So look, this is me for the night. I'm gonna be in here. I was just sussing out. The mozzies are actually pretty bloody bad. Look at that big whacker on my elbow there. I've got heaps of bites here on my ankle. And that's why you wear, that's why I'm wearing jeans. You're probably like, why are you wearing jeans? These aren't even my jeans, man. I got them off a mate when I got dropped off on the side of the road because I knew I was gonna get smoked by mozzies. But um, this is me for the night. I'm just gonna keep trying to do this. If I light it up, I'm gonna bloody cheer and bring you guys in along with me. And if not, I'm just gonna have to sleep in this cave in the darkness, but shouldn't be too bad. I'm literally just gonna put me, put me bag somewhere like that. Use that as a pillow. There's that beautiful bottle we found today. Chuck that over there, that can be a weapon in the middle of the night as well. And um, I'm just going to lay there on top of all that rabbit shit, and that's me for the night. Don't want to go too far in there. Spiders, snakes, wasps, who knows. But anyway, that's me for the night. Have a look at this, that sun is completely gone, nearly. Epic. This is home. So, it is about to go pitch black, and... Um, Hopefully I see you guys in 10, 20, 30 minutes around the fire. If not, I'll just speak to you in the darkness. Here we go, round two, with that piece of junk. Oh! Oh, you've got to be kidding me. All right, here's a very quick update. The time is currently 9.23 at night. We obviously have no fire. I have no... No way of lighting this cave up right now. It is pitch black. I'm getting absolutely fucking destroyed by mosquitoes. You don't even understand. This is the worst night I've ever had of my entire life. The mosquitoes are thick. Can't start a fire. My hands, the only light I get is from the camera lens. And my hands feel like absolute blisters from trying to light the fire. Oh, it's just the shittest night ever. Sitting in this cave. Getting the odd ant crawl over me, but the mosquitoes are just incredible. I'm putting my hands and my arms inside my shirt. And um, I'm so thirsty. This is why we do it, but anyway, I'll um, keep you updated. I don't reckon I'm going to get much sleep tonight, but uh, here we go. Season in the morning or um, whatever else happens. There are some massive kangaroos jumping around outside, but... Uh, Guess I'll see you in the morning. It is 8 to 24 at night, and this is gonna be one shit sleep. Why do I do this to myself? Oh man. That was the worst night of my entire life, man. Good bloody morning to you. It's a little bit chilly. Tell you what, if there was an eject button, I would have pushed it last night. I haven't been that pissed off in a while. The mosquitoes were that bad. I had to sleep with my arms inside my shirt like this just to stop the mosquitoes from biting me. It kind of kept me a little bit warm. Thankfully, I've got a pair of jeans on. Have a look at this. This is just, look at this mosquito. Look at that. These things are absolutely everywhere. Didn't, I didn't expect them to be so bad, but we did get through the night and um, that was absolute shit house. Oh, what I'm going to do is I've got to get myself back into a positive mindset. We can do anything out here if you've got a good mindset. Like, that's the key. Right now, I just feel shit because that really was a bad sleep. I haven't had water for one whole day, one whole night. My lips are absolutely cracked. Like, they're really, really dry. My throat's real crunchy for some reason. Haven't really had much sleep, but something that did help me out last night is this eucalyptus. I went down there last night, I ripped a couple of these eucalyptus trees off one of those trees, uh, leaves off one of those trees. And what I was doing most of the night was just grabbing a little handful of leaves, 
mashing them up in between my hands. And if you smell that, that smells absolutely incredible. Just a real strong eucalyptus smell. So what I was doing, getting that tarry stuff out of the leaves, and then I was just basting my arms all night. And that was actually keeping the mosquitoes off me quite well. So I'd do that to my arms, my neck, my ankles. And um, that was working a treat. The old eucalyptus, the natural eucalyptus keeping the mosquitoes away. But one thing that I didn't know or didn't think about in this cave was the, the crickets. This cave is full of crickets. So like I said, if we, if we don't find food, look, it's not going to be hard to have a feed of crickets. We can cook them up on a fire if we can get a fire going. But this whole entire cave is just full of little crickets and they were crawling all over me last night. I thought they were ants and then I figured out they were crickets once I caught one. So, But look, as soon as that sun goes down, you can't see anything in here. I've only got the, the light on my watch, which isn't very good, and the camera. So anyway, I'll show you these crickets and um, <clears throat> I'm going to get the spirits high and get this fire going. Look at these crickets. They're absolutely everywhere in this cave. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> they are everywhere, man. Hundreds and hundreds of crickets. So that one. They were crawling all over me last night. So we're going to have no shortage of food. Have a go at them all. Look at them. All right, so what I'm doing right now is this is the biggest, most important time right now. We need to go dry, try and find dry material to get an ignition with that bloody spindle and stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch up into the bush back where we made that compass. I'm going to go up to high ground and um, I'm going to try to find some really crispy dry grass or something that's going to take an ignition. Some really fibrous material which is going to take ignition because what I was using yesterday was an absolute joke and we're just wasting precious, precious time. So... You can't go, once you, once you go two days without water, you're gonna start feeling the effects. Day three, if I go three days without water, I'm gonna be cooked. So we really, really need to pull, I really need to pull my head into gear and um, start, start sourcing some water. Without fire, we can't boil the water. So we need fire to have a drink. That's the biggest thing right now. So I'm gonna punch up the bush, try to find a dry material. Alright. Okay, we've been for a massive walk this morning. We have four different types of material here. I've got different grasses. We've got wood from the mul uh, bark from a mulga tree. We've got all different types. We've got four different types of material. Surely one of these materials is gonna take a light. It has to. Alright. Let's get back on the bow drill. We need to get a fire going real bad. <sighs> oh yes, come on. Come on. This is it, look at this, we got it again. Come on, come on, yes! Yes, 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 yes! Come on. Fuck yeah! Yes, yes! Yes! You have got to be kidding! That is what I'm talking about. Holy shit! 
Yes! <sighs> Holy shit! We did it! We actually got it going. Oh! That is the best feeling you don't even understand right now. Look at my hands, man. My hands are absolutely cooked. Look at that. That's worth every single second. Oh, you've got to be joking. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh. That took, we would have taken about, I've been here since we got the dry grass, about 15 to 20 minutes. Just flat out on that stick. The grass that worked was a different grass that we used. It was a super fine, very, very fine grass. And as soon as that ember fell into the grass, it started smoldering. So that was the, that was the key. You have the right materials, you can start the fire. That's by far the hardest fire I've ever had to start. Possibly, there's hours and hours put into that. But we got it. Have a look at this. Ah! That is the best way to start a day ever. You know that scene off Castaway where he's jumping around like a bloody chicken in the beach because he started a fire? That is what I feel like right now. That is bringing back, that has brought back all the life in me. Incredible. Took a bloody long time to start though. Oh, it's so good. All right, we can actually go down to the creek now, collect the water, boil it up, and I can finally have a drink. This is a bloody good time. Oh, all right, here we go, look at this. This is the pond of water, which we're gonna be get gathering in the water from. So it's actually quite, an, quite a large pool of water here, but the problem is, there's a lot of algae on that backside. So the reason that I haven't had a drink of this water yet is you cannot drink this water the way that it is. If I drank that water right now and started drinking it, I'd probably end up with diarrhea, I'd probably end up sick, and that's gonna make me even more dehydrated. So what you gotta do is you've gotta boil this water, bring it up over 100 degrees, kill all the bacteria in the actual water, then you can drink it. Can't drink it like this, but um, look, we've got an end, a never ending amount of water here. Oh. Let's gather some up and have a drink, I'm dying. Ah, oh, look at that. That's epic. Couple of floaties in there, but she's gonna be all right. Well, this is also going to come in extremely handy. Have a look at this. There's an old in your export can. Doesn't look like it's got holes in it, but she's been there for a while. That's what we can actually use to boil the water in. That's perfect. So while that water is boiling back at camp, just come back out here trying to find another can or a bottle. So we've got three utensils to use to transport water and absolutely no luck. It's a bloody good thing there is no rubbish around here, but what there is, there's a whole heap of white gums. So all these trees you see surrounding me here is a tree called a white gum. And these trees, you can make bowls, you can make bloody canoes, you can make everything out of these trees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little water transportation device out of this tree. So there is absolutely no shortage of these white gums around here. But I have found this one. It's obviously been in a fire or hit by lightning. It's looking a little bit cooked. It's probably on the brinks of death. So I thought I'd use this one. So what you can actually do is you can use the bark off the tree. So what I've done, I've got my knife. I've cut around the bark like this in a perfect bowl shape. And then on the inside here, you get this nice little lip. I've also cut that away as well. 
So what you're left with essentially, that'll come off and that's gonna be like a bowl. All right, so here's the piece of bark. We've sliced the whole way around. And then what happens, you can just give it a wiggle and it'll come off like that. So what we've got here is a perfect bowl. So once, this is actually quite moist right now. All right, so here it is. That is the bush bowl. So you can do a lot with this stuff here. You can actually, it's quite flexible when it's soft. So you can bend it like this. You can make some cordage, tie the cordage around it. That'll dry solid like that. So it's a very easy way to be able to taking things. You can fill it up with food. You can fill it up with fish if we get a couple of fish, tie it up like that. And you've got a perfect little container to take fish around. Also what you can do is while it's soft is bend up the corners and you can actually collect water with this thing, take it back and forth to camp. It's a very universal little piece of kit and um, it'll last you a lifetime if you look after it. So all you've got to do is bend him up like that. You can make a bowl or straighten it out like that flat. We'll probably use this as a plate later on if we get a couple of fish, but um, it's a very handy little thing in the bush. If we didn't find that bottle or we didn't find that can, I would have done this. Would have bent it up like that, bend the corners up, collect water, and um, there you go. You can pretty much, you can pick any tree. The bigger the tree, the bigger this is. I mean, you can get them this round. So you can literally take whatever you want around. Pretty sure they used to make canoes out of them back in the day, but that is a little bush bowl, and that's gonna come very, very much in handy in the next couple of hours. Well, we're back at camp. And this water has cooled down. It's actually not a bad can. There's no holes in it. She's just about 100 years old. But it is my first sip of water in about a day and a half. So this is going to taste incredibly good. There's actually quite a few floaties. It's quite hard to see inside the can, but you can see a few little bits of floaty shit. But that's going to be good enough to drink. And, um... Mmm... Oh, you can just feel it going all the way. Oh, that is incredible. Doesn't taste, doesn't taste very good. That's, it's almost got, you could almost call that salty. It's like I've got a very salty sort of taste to it. Then again, I don't know what was in this can before we started boiling it. Mmm. Oh, that's incredible to wet my lips. See if you guys can have a look at the um, bubbly shit coming out. It doesn't matter how much water we waste now because we've got a never-ending source of water, but I don't know if you can see those floaties in there. There's a couple, huh? We could have strained it through a bottle and a shirt, but, mate, I'm pretty happy about that. We've got fire. We've got water. We've got shelter. All we need now is a little bit of food, but what it is right now, it's peak of the day. It's just about to go 11 o'clock in the morning, so... Just gonna hang out in the cave. I'm gonna hydrate. I'm gonna drink about three or four cans of water. Just gonna keep boiling it, letting it cool down, drink it, boil it, cool down, drink it. And um, when that sun buggers off and it cools down a little bit, I'm gonna start fishing in the Arvo, see if we can get a fish. We've got, a, we've got that little bit of line and we've got one fishing hook. And we've got a cave full of crickets. So all the crickets inside this cave, they're gonna get put out there as bait and hopefully we can get a fish put on the fire tonight. Anyway. To be honest, I wasn't even worried about food. It's all about having a drink of water, and we've absolutely nailed that on the head. So, cheers to you. It's bloody good. Mmm. Oh, that's incredible. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm.
Yeah. That's heaps better. Have a go at this. All right, so what we've done here, we've just made ourselves a little bit of a natural mattress because this morning when I woke up, to be honest, I felt like an absolute bag of dicks. I had no water yesterday, it was a big walk in. Then I had to sleep on the ground. I had absolute mosquito attack last night and I was just feeling shit house this morning. So I feel a lot better right now. I've had about four or five cans of water. I've got a whole liter of water processed over there. The whole can has been boiled and processed, which is a really bloody good thing. So we've got a bed, we've got water and we've got a fire. Tonight's gonna be a little bit more exciting, but I haven't eaten any food with nearly for two days now. So we're about to go fishing, hunt some fish. But before we go fishing, I want to quickly run you through what, this, what I showed you yesterday. This is called a PLB, or a personal, personal location beacon. So right now, I am in the absolute middle of nowhere. It would have been about a four or five hour walk from the highway to get to where I'm sitting right now. And it's probably about the same to the next town, which is about a four or five hour walk that way. So if something really happened to me out here, I don't have a phone, I don't have a radio, I've got no means of communicating help from anybody at all. And that's where this little thing sort of comes in extremely bloody handy. So this is from the fellas at GME. It's called a PLB. And um, what you do is you just flick that little switch there, open that up, smash that red button, and that red button is gonna shoot up a signal to a satellite, that satellite will ping back down and pick this up, and then that's gonna give emergency crews your location. So as soon as that beacon goes off, bang, you've got saved. And it just, to have it in my backpack, it just gives me that little bit more of insurance, but it also makes me push myself that little bit harder. Like this thing, having that in my backpack, I don't have any worries of coming out here with no water, no food for a five days to a week because if shit really hits the fan, I know that I've got something saving my ass. So I think everybody, everyone who enjoys the outdoors should have something like that in their pack. And um, with that said, we're gonna go fishing and put this fishing hook and um, line to the test. And if we don't catch any food, I'm gonna scavenge up all of these crickets in here. We're gonna put them on a stick, roast them over the fire. I'm gonna eat them, but I reckon we'll get a little fish or something. We should do anyway. Let's go give it a red hot crack. Hopefully we get some. Oh. All right, there's some bait there. Look at that. One, two. Oh, I've got two little slater bugs here. That's going to be a little bit of bait. Oh, what was that? Uh, there's a beautiful little gecko. He would probably be good bait if I cut him up, but I can't do that to him. See you, mate. Go on. Man, there, ain't no, there isn't a lot of there isn't a lot of life around here. All right, that is our only hook that we have. So if we lose this hook, we are absolutely screwed. Hopefully we don't lose it. See if we can get a fish up here. First bit of bait we're putting on is two slater bugs. Wow, they're small. See how the slaters go? And then we've got a few other different little bugs, little moth and something else. I've just relocated those two little slater bugs. Of what I've done, I've casted them right on the end of the green shrubs here that are entering the water. So hopefully there's a couple of little fish that are taking shelter in there. They'll come out, have a feed. We'll get one. We could be here all night. Oh, come on, come on. Is that a fish? Oh, yes! You are joking! Look at this. <laughs> oh my God. Have a go at this. That's what we call a grunter. And that thing just engulfed two slater bugs. 
Those baits have been out there for quite a while, but we finally had success. I've seen the line just going twitch, 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 and then bang, look at that. We've got ourselves a little grunter. That is epic. Beautiful little fish. He's going straight on the fire. Let's see if we can get five or six more. We're gonna have a hell feed. Oh, that's psycho. I can't believe that worked. We gotta go find some more slater bugs. Put this guy out of his misery. Let's go get some more slaters. Yes, sir! Have a look at this. Are you kidding me? I just caught a mullet in my hat. Are you actually joking, man? You can't, you cannot script that. Are you? <laughs> it's, what is going on, man? That little fella, I just seen him swimming in and I was like, oh, I'm gonna use my hat as a fishing net. And we actually just launched it out of the water. That is the best bit of bait ever. I no longer have to go looking for slater bugs or crickets. That's incredible. I'm gonna slice him up into little pieces, chuck him out. You're joking. <laughs> ah, that's fish on. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh no. There's another one. Look at the size of this little thing. That's a little brim. So I'm gonna put him back. These things have to be size here in Australia. And um, I can't really keep him, but he's a beautiful little fish. Let him go. Oh, see you mate. That's the thing, if we catch a brim, they've gotta be 25 centimeters or 30 centimeters or something like that. So um, even though that I'm starving myself to death out here, I'm still gonna abide by the rules. Yes, come on. No. Another brim. Hoi. All right, come on, we need to get more of these grunter. Have a look at this. That one is bigger than my hand and I'm gonna have to let it go because it's another brim. That would absolutely, two of them would feed me. Ah. Come on, we need to get these grunter. I've got one grunter on the bank and that's it. I've never wanted to catch a shit fish so bad in my entire life. I'm starving. Here we go, here we go, come on. Yes, sir, uh -huh. there we go. There's a little trumpeter, a little grunter. That's gonna be food, we can keep that one. That's two on the board. And that sun is absolutely racing down. I don't have too much time. Oh my God, check this out. Check this out. Oh no. It was another. Oh, there it is there, look. Look at this, look at this. Come back up, come back up. It's another suicide mullet. That's way bigger. Come up here, come up here. There it is, look. Ah, he's not so suicide. Yeah, nah, he's not. He's not dumb like his little mate. Another little grunter. That's three. That's three for the fire. Yes, sir. There we go. That's four and it's getting bigger. That's epic. Yes.
Righto, have a look at this. There are the four fish we got. And that sun is absolutely pumping down. What I've done here, I've just made a natural little grill plate. So this is dry sticks. The dry sticks aren't gonna, aren't gonna burn. And these fish are gonna cook incredibly good. They're not massive, but we got four. And it's enough for a feed, that's for sure. It's better than eating bloody crickets, I'll give you the hot tip. Oh, look at this. So that's that plate I made today out of that bark. Absolutely epic. This is going to be incredible. Have a look at this. How good is it? Got a fish down here. Cooking beautifully. I think before I just said on the dry sticks. <laughs> There's actually wet sticks. So the wet stick doesn't burn as quick as the fish cooks. So you get a perfectly cooked fish. There's no ash. There's no dirt in your fish. And um, that is putting out a whole lot of heat. These are going to be incredible. Not the best tasting fish in the world, but it is my first meal in two days. So, um, look, I'll take anything I can get right now. Whew. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get that fire pumping. Keep the mosquitoes away tonight. As that sun pumps down... Our dinner's cooling down, look at that. Four fresh fish that were literally caught no longer than 20 minutes, half an hour ago. The sun is racing down, it's gonna be dark in 15. But that is our dinner for the night. So we successfully caught food. I was a little bit worried actually, once we started catching them brim, I thought to myself, we are just gonna get brim after brim, but we got four and that's enough to have a feed. Look at this, the skin will just peel off the fish. Absolutely beautifully. You can't really eat that, but look at this. Whoa, that's hot, man. Look at that pure white flesh. The whole thing there is edible. The top little shoulder. No, but oh, look at that. Pulled away from the bones. Absolutely perfect. That is one chunk of meat. Huh. Tell you what, for a shitty fish, it tastes pretty bloody good. Mm. Well, here's cheers to catching a feed. It looks like I'm drinking a bloody beer, but it's actually river water that's been on the fire. Mmm. But look at this, we've made a sustainable little house. We found shelter, we started fire, we've made drinking water, and to top the day off, we've even got beautiful eating fish. It's not beautiful eating fish, but to me, this tastes absolutely incredible. Any other day of the week in society, that, that would be thrown in the bin. But around here, it is going down like absolute gold. It's actually not bad at all. I don't know if it's because I'm hungry or what, but it's pretty good. All right, so pretty much the plan for me now is I'm going to gear up for another night in this cave. Going to go collect firewood. I want to go rip some eucalyptus leaves off of another tree so I can rub the um, leaves on my arms and my neck like I did last night. That worked real good. And then um, I'm set for the night. I've got a fire. I got that container is full of drinking water. Got half a can of water down here. I'm pretty much sorted. Might go, might go and grab a couple of like um, little bits of kangaroo shit, chuck them on the fire. Usually that's a good deterrent from mosquitoes, but we'll just see how we go. Quickly finish these two little fish off. Go for a power firewood hunt, and then um, I guess I'll see you in the morning. Unless anything cool happens tonight, we'll hit record. The only problem is we don't have any torches. Have a look at this man. Look where I am right now. 
Most people would think you put yourself in a shit situation with only a knife, fishing line and a hook for three days sleeping in a cave in the middle of bloody nowhere and you'd be in a bad mood. Tell you what mate, I'm in a pretty bloody good mood right now. Have a look at where I am. Anyway, I just quickly wanted to say that um, there is no shortage of firewood and there is absolutely no shortage of kangaroo shit. Check this out. That is as fresh as it gets. There must be a big dog around here somewhere. There's got to be. Have a look at this. Well, I'm going to pick a massive log, drag him all the way back to the cave, and um, I guess I'll see you guys in the morning. Much love, doggies. Ow! In all honesty, this is going to take a while. See you in the morning. Oh, that's hot. That is beautiful. All right, welcome to day three. Sleeping last night was considerably better. Lot, lot better sleep than the night before. With a fire, with water, it's just, it just really does make it better. Look, it still wasn't an incredible sleep. Mosquitoes were still out in force, but that eucalyptus on my arms kind of stopped him. I was just getting bitten on my knuckles, a few on my ankles, but it was a pretty good sleep compared to last night, so pretty happy with that. I've been sitting here since about 3.30 this morning. Couldn't sleep. There's some bug inside this cave. It just makes these high-pitched noises. And I actually woke up because I've got cuts on my hands. I don't know what from dragging sticks around or what from, but absolutely aching hands. Doesn't help with that bow drill. We're doing that for hours and hours on end. Hands are aching, but it's all good. Pretty rested and um, ready for whatever today throws at us. We've just been sitting here since probably three, just boiling water, not boiling water, but keeping it warm and just pretending that it's coffee. So I've just been drinking hot water, playing myself a little games that it's actually coffee and it's kind of good. Anyway, let's see what today brings us. Wait for that sun to pop up. That's not gonna take too long. That'll boost up over there and then um, oh, see what we do today. <clears throat> Listen to the birds, man. It's incredible.
All right, so what we've just made here is something along the lines of a fish trap. So what happens is this stick here is under extreme tension right now. So this trap is actually loaded. So that, that stick is under tension. So is this fishing line coming down to this rock. So what I've done is I've went and found the perfect rock. This rock has a very sharp little edge on it. I went and made a little key or a little knock with a piece of wood, just a stick. And that little knock just hooks on to the corner of the rock. So the way that it works is once the fish pulls on that loose line, which is going to be floating out in the water there, that fish is going to tug on that knock end. And as that knock gets tugged, it gets releases off the rock. And then all this built up pressure just goes whack and it should hook the fish in the mouth. So the reason that you make something like this and you don't just chuck your bait out there is if you're just going to float your bait out there and just have a hook with no tension, 99% of the time what happens is the fish will come up, they'll peck the bait off and they'll be able to swim off and you'll just have your hook out there with no bait and you're literally just wasting time. But a method like this, the advantage of this method is you can load this trap, you can have your bit of bait floating out there and while you're away building a shelter, gathering water, trying to find different bits of food or even trying to provide yourself with a little bit more bait, this thing, you've got a lot more chance of hooking that fish in the mouth. And once he's hooked, he should stay on for a little while. You'll hear this thing snap when it goes off anyway. So as soon as you hear it off, snap off, you'll run back, collect your feed, and um, you can just repeat the process over and over again. So what we'll do is chuck on a little bit of that old mullet from yesterday. We'll float it out there. I've still got that mullet in my bag, the suicide mullet. We'll float him out there and um, we'll just see if we can get a fish on this fish trap. Yes. All right, so that just, all right, so this has just literally snapped. What a... All right, look at this. So just, it's been out there for about 40 minutes. Have a look at this. Check this out. That right there is a brim and it has perfectly hooked him in the side of the mouth. I don't know if you can see that, but that is incredible. It actually works really well. So that's hooked him in the side of the mouth. He's a beautiful little fish, look at the colors in him. But that, I don't know, that, that's been out there for about 40 minutes, 40, 30 minutes. And we finally got one. That's the first piece of bait. So it shows how effective these little traps are. If you were to set 10 or 11 of these, if you've got enough line and enough hooks, you could set 10 or 11 of these out there and um, you could just keep catching fish like this. So the joy about it is now that he's got the hook set in his mouth, what happens is, this is what will happen. When you come walking up the bank, you see your little stick. It'll be dancing like this. Look at that. That's when you know you've got a fish on. And you just quickly run up to it, bring your fish in, and you're, um, you're eating good. Look at this. All right, we'll get him back in the water. Obviously, we can't eat him. He's a brim. They need to be a certain size. So, um, see you later, mate. Bring on the big dogs. Come on, buddy. Off he goes. There you go. All that was done on a stick, a little homemade key, and a rock from way, way over there and yonder. Absolutely epic little technique if you want to catch fish and you don't want to stand there holding the line. Tell you what, mate, as soon as that sun comes out, so do the flies. It's getting hectic out here. So there you go, you can actually catch fish using that tension stick method. Now, if you had four or five hooks and enough fishing line, you'd be able to set them up all along the bank, 
checking them every couple of minutes. I mean, you could indefinitely live out here doing these methods. I gave myself three days. We came out here with no water, no food, no shelter, one knife, one hook, and one little bit of fishing line. And we've pretty much turned Outback Australia into a livable place. We've got methods of starting fire using this sticks here. We have a method of boiling water on the fire, and we have ways of catching fish. So this last three days, it's been good. People say this stuff's easy. It is not easy whatsoever. My hands are burning. You have sleepless nights. You get mosquito bites all over you. But I suppose that's the joy. I don't know. It's, I absolutely love it. I do it for myself more than anything. It's more of a personal thing that I love to do. And um, there's many more of these things coming. So what I've got to do right now is I've got a massive walk all the way back to the highway, probably four hours, whatever it took me to get here. I've got to walk back that way again. So I'm going to love yous. I'm going to leave yous. And um, it's been a pleasure hanging out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure if you guys want to grab your merch, smash this button here. If you haven't subscribed, smash this button here. There's plenty more Elite Survival videos coming up. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Much love, doggies. Ow!